What up y'all and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, we're gonna talk about if we prune during the winter or not. And this just all depends on your system and what trees you're planting. So let's get into it. All right, y'all, so when it comes down to pruning, it just depends on your system, the plant species that you've selected and your design. Right now, the system I'm in is our subtropic system. We have a lot of flowers, or sorry, we have a lot of plants actually flowering, especially the support trees, which we don't want to flower, going into senescence. And typically when we start seeing certain plants going into that stage of senescence, uh, we want to come through and interfere. But in our context, in this system, since we're mostly planting a lot of subtropic, tropical type species, we don't want to do that, especially this time of year. We're now in the beginning of January. January is our coldest month here in Central Florida in that zone nine uh, area, um, which technically we're 10A, but I still believe we're more zone nine than anything, uh, especially experiencing frost already. And this upcoming week, we got some heavy frost that we're are getting ready for. So with that being said, to prune or not to prune? And the answer to that in my context and within this system with subtropics, we're not pruning. It's a little, it kind of gets uh, like, I get eager to want to prune every time I see my support species going to flower, especially if I don't want to collect seeds or I'm not trying to get a fruit out of it um, because we don't want that information to um, send out through the whole entire system. But this time of year, it's not worth pruning because we're having this heavy growth and we want as much foliage as possible to help nurture and protect our frost sensitive type crops. We do have an alleyway here of different uh, brassicas, which they can take the frost. But then we have our species like our avocado, which wants to be a little bit warm it can tolerate some temperatures into the 20s but ideally it does not want to be in that in those conditions so this is why we created this whole entire system to cater to the avocado so with that being said though there are some plants here on the farm that we do want to prune during the winter and those are going to be more tempered type crops so subtropic tropics and those systems, the dead of the winter, we don't want any pruning. The time that I actually come in and do prune is around February 15th. And the reason why I use February 15th as my mark is that typically by, well, let me step back. Our first frost, potential frost date is labeled as, or what they have listed is January 1st. And our last frost date is January 31st. But sometimes we do have a late frost or a late cold snap that comes in in the beginning of February. But for the most part, February 15th in this area where we're located here in Central Florida is usually my marking that it's okay to come in and start doing that pruning. Go ahead and do that heavy reset, that systematic pruning or any stratification pruning, getting rid of a lot of the frost damage leaves from the winter, uh, planting new species, fill in my gaps, and continue forward. This is also around the same time that I start splitting bees. So in this area, I kind of go off the rhythm of the bees. When the bees get active and they're ready to start swarming, um, that's where I figure nature in this area is ready to um, spring up. So since my years of always beekeeping here, February 15th is our swarming season and when we start splitting. So I transfer that to actually um, my pruning for my agroforestry system to go ahead and cut back on the Mubasa grass, remove any dead leaves that are gonna be from future frosts that are about to, actually that we're about to experience next week. So yeah, we want to stimulate that growth pulse, pulse so we could actually push forward in succession, push forward with our target species and pushing forward in that fertility and whatnot and all the benefits of farming this way. 
Now going to our peach orchard, which is a tempered crop, we actually want to do our dormant pruning. Uh, this is the time of year that we come through and I bring down the canopy, take out any dead limbs, open up any uh, cut off or trim off, trim off any problematic branches from the peach trees and get them ready for um, essentially late January, early February is when our peaches go into bloom. So if this was fully a temperate system, you would want to go ahead, especially your target species, to do that dormant pruning. But for all the subtropic systems, we want to avoid all pruning as possible because most of them are sensitive to that frost. So anyways, that's just my insight on winter pruning in an agroforestry system. So another thing with our tempered system, or I don't wanna say we have a full tempered system. We have one tempered target species within our system, which we're now planting more subtropic species into like bananas, mulberries, eucalyptus, moringa, that this system will eventually transition out of peaches and transition into more subtropics. If I would have done this again, uh, I would have fit more uh, tempered type trees or more deciduous type trees into the system. Um, but now I'm actually incorporating more subtropic species. Um, I kind of like the idea of keeping your subtropic tropics together and your tempered species and your deciduous tree species uh, together as well. So when you're designing a system, I think tempered crops or te uh, tempered target species should be planted with trees that align with their growth habits and their dormancy. And then subtropics, planting those with it, a lot of those evergreening uh, crops. But uh, anyways, that's just my personal opinion and insight on that. There might be other people who believe uh, or have different thoughts on that, you know, which is totally fine. I'm always open to discussion. And uh, yeah, that's essentially it. If y'all have any other questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. Um, I try and get to answering every single one. And uh, until then, y'all, take it easy.